There's one. Ha <laughs> ha Hello, Mr. Popper Eater. How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to TRF. As you can tell, I'm at a pond today. Oh, here we go. And we're gonna be talking about what is inside of my tackle bag that I bring to the pond every single time I head out on the water. Nope, 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 yes. Oh, wow, this guy's fat. <laughs> look at that fish. For a pond fish, look how absolutely chunky that is. You know, ponds come in all shapes and sizes, and so I feel like it's helpful to give you guys a video on what comes in my pond fishing bag. From terminal tackle to hard baits to soft baits and jigs, I wanna talk about it all today, so uh, let's talk about it. Well, before we sit down and look at exactly what I think are the essentials needed for uh, pond bass fishing, no matter where you are in the country, and kind of what my pond tackle box and tackle bag look like, we need to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Ridge Wallets. The Ridge Wallet is a company that I'm excited to be talking about here on the channel, and the reasoning for that is because I actually enjoy using the product. You guys know that I do not talk about a sponsor unless I actually believe in the company itself. And uh, the Ridge Wallet is no different. In the, I think, month now that I've been using this wallet, it has radically transformed the way that I look at my wallet. You know, I used to use a super thick wallet. And by the way, so many of y'all out there, you have iPhones, you got Androids, you got smartphones. Why the heck are you still using a thick wallet? Why? Someone tell me. The Ridge Wallet holds up to 12 full-size cards with room for cash on the back. And of course, don't take my word for it, take their 30,000 five-star reviews. And so I want to take a quick second to show y'all exactly how to work it in case you're confused by this wallet shape, how it works. What you do is you push the cards up in this little section here to where they all come out, I don't know, two or three millimeters above. Then you pinch the back side here and the cards open up like that. And then you go in there and you grab whichever one you want. There's my credit card, but I'm not going to show you that because that's not smart. It's almost become second nature to me, just like how easy it is to like take it out of my pocket. And of course, how small it is just to take it out poke it out like this, grab the card I need, shove it back in, and uh, you're off for the rest of your day. Plus, the cool thing about it is if you don't like your purchase, if for some reason you're not happy with your wallet, you can send it back in the first 45 days and get a complete money back guarantee. That's how confident they are that you're gonna love it. And I'm pretty dang confident you're gonna love it as well. So if you guys wanna make a Ridge wallet purchase, you guys can get 10% off your first order by using code TRF. The link will be down in the description for y'all to check out. Thank you to Ridge for sponsoring this video. And let's talk about Pond Fishing Essentials. So I'm realizing that part of my audience does not have availability to a bass boat like I do. And so a lot of the videos I make in terms of instructionals that I make on the lake may feel a little bit disconnected to you guys that only have the avail availability to fish in ponds. And so I'm gonna make a concerted effort this, this summer and this fall to make a ton of pond content for y'all as well. Don't worry, boat stuff's not going away. I'm just gonna add in some pond content. So today I'm gonna break down exactly what I keep with me when I'm pond hopping uh, whether I'm, you know, parking the truck right next to the pond, walking down to it, you know, where it's easy access to go get more lures that you brought, or whether you're packing a backpack, you're hiking a mile into the woods to a pond that you know is out there, an absolute, you know, juice hole that uh, nobody else knows about, but you can only bring a certain amount of tackle because you don't want to have to, you know, hike a mile back to the truck. And so I'm going to talk about my general uh, tackle box and tackle bag that I bring with me when I am pond hopping. So I'm going to start with the soft plastic bag. This here is a uh, is a Bassmaster Bass member bag. I used to use this bag as a lunchbox back in high school, uh, and then I lost it, so I, I asked Bassmaster for another one. They sent it to me, and now I use it as a tackle bag for when I'm pond hopping or uh, jumping in a buddy's boat, and I want to bring some soft plastics. So uh, I'm going to say the first thing about pond fishing is that soft plastics is going to be in my experience, the most effective way to catch bass uh, and to catch big bass. I think ponds, uh, for most part, especially here in Texas, are shallow, uh, grassy, mossy, not a whole lot of clear water, not a whole lot of rocks. And so when it comes to jigs, crankbaits, you're gonna have an application for those, as I'll show you in my hard bait box here. But most of the time, I'm gonna be throwing soft plastics. And so what I keep in this bag is a wide gambit of things, and, I, and I'll kind of show you the, the, the whole spectrum. So the first thing is going to be, of course, some kind of worm. Now I really only keep two worms in this bag, and that is the Ocho and the Finesse Worm. This here is a six inch Strike King Ocho. Hopefully y'all can see this and it focuses. Six inch Striking Ocho, and then right here I have the Fat Baby Finesse Worm. 
both the KVD soft plastic material. And uh, I just found that this fits the majority of what you need in ponds. Sure, you can throw a curly tail worm. You can throw a, uh, I don't know, a split tail worm. There's so many different types of worms you can throw, but there's something about the stick bait that just catches them all around the country. And of course, when you're having a little bit of, of extra trouble getting them to bite a, a, a worm this big, I drop it down to the finesse worm, either on a Texas rig or a shaky head. So that's, that's what I throw in terms of worms into my soft plastic bag. I also keep an extra bag of watermelon red ochos because you can never have too many. And then I also have a bag of, I don't know if it's black and blue, June bug. June bug six inch ochos as well. I prefer to throw the six inch just because I found that it still gets the same amount of small bites, but it, it ups the amount of big bites you get dramatically. I hardly ever get a big bite on a five inch ocho as compared to how many big bites I get on the six inch. So that's the worms that I use. Uh, let's see what else I got. Then I got a little Ned Rig Worm. I always keep a Ned Rig Worm in my soft plastic bag because you never know when you're going to have an opportunity to throw maybe in the deeper section of the pond, uh, maybe a rocky bank like the, the, like the dam section of, uh, of a pond. Ned Rig works great, especially uh, after a cold front. So I always keep a Ned Rig in there. And then I always keep a few uh, creature baits. And so usually it's either a rodent or rage craws or uh, space monkeys, just kind of depending on what I'm feeling. These can be used as drake trailers. You can put these on the back of a chatterbait as a trailer, or you can just throw them by themselves to kind of imitate crawfish or bluegill. So I always have some creature baits mixed in. Now you'll notice I'm only four or five, you know, bags in and I'm already halfway done. That's because I don't keep a whole lot of soft plastics in here. I see kids walk in the bank all the time and they have like an entire backpack on their back with like seven different slots for tackle boxes. And I'm just like, you don't need that much. You know, like there's, there's rarely a time when you're gonna get to an area and you have zero clue what the pond is like. I mean, if, if you're a good angler, you're gonna look up on Google Earth, if you've never been to the pond, what it looks like from, from a top. So you can at least know, all right, the water clarity is good, bad, looks like it has grass, looks like it has rocks. And that will, uh, of course, change what type of lures you have to bring. So I keep it light. I have a tackle bag and I have a tackle box. I don't think you need a whole backpack. It's just, that's, that's my personal opinion. I think you're overprepared and uh, it kind of allows your mind to wander to places it probably shouldn't uh, in terms of, of lure selection and, and the options. I think in terms of ponds, you keep it easy, keep it simple, and, uh, and you'll catch more fish. Of course, I always add in a jig trailer like the, uh, is this the Rage Chunk? Yeah, the Rage Chunk right here in a green pumpkin. Uh, I do have one pack of five inch ochos. That is kind of for a bed fishing scenario. I don't know why I kept it because we don't have any beds anymore, but I have that in here. Uh, and then my favorite, I'll talk about this in a separate video, probably film it this afternoon as well. It'll drop sometime soon, is my favorite soft plastic for ponds, really my favorite lure for ponds. And that is the soft plastic jerk bait or what the, the Kleenex brand name is the fluke. I absolutely love flukes and ponds because they imitate exactly what bass and ponds are eating. I'd say 90%, if not more, of the forage in a pond, the main forage, is either tiny bait fish or normal sized bluegill. Of course, you're gonna have crawfish in some ponds, you're gonna have some perch in some ponds. Uh, bass might even eat their own in some ponds. But for the most part, your bass are either gonna be eating bluegill, which is why I have the four inch uh, Strike King Caffeine Shad in watermelon red, or they're gonna be eating tiny bait fish, which is why I have the four inch Caffeine Shad in smoky shad. These are my two favorite colors when it comes to the caffeine shad. And I've got them in four inch, and I've also got both of them in five inch as well, depending on what size the bait fish and the bluegill are in the pond you are, uh, you're fishing. And that is, I, I always keep two packs of those to make sure I have enough for my day of fishing. And lastly, I have a pack of 4.8 .8 inch, I guess 4.75 inch rage swimmers uh, that I put these on the back of, uh, or on a swim bait hook or on a flashy swimmer hook. And that is all the soft plastics. There's no more. I keep it so simple. I really don't think there's a need to have a crazy amount of soft plastics in your bag. I think it overcomplicates things. And uh, like I said, most bass out there are eating bluegills and bait fish, and you can imitate that with uh, the soft plastic, uh, soft plastic jerk bait pretty dang well. So when I uh, open up the front compartment here, of my bag, you'll see that I keep a few kind of utensils. I have my pliers and my scissors in the bottom of the main compartment. Then I have my Connect Scale version 3.0 because you always gotta weigh your fish. You're never gonna know when you're gonna catch a giant. I've got some eight pound Seaguar Tatsu fluorocarbon for my spinning rod leaders. And then I've also got, because uh, I, I don't have a sleeve for them, I keep them in the front, I've got two spinner baits. 
And the reason why I keep two is because there's two different conditions. There's dirty water, so I've got an orange blade, Colorado blade, and a, and a bigger jig. This is the, uh, I think, the Greg Hackney heavy cover. And then I've got the burner, which is used for more clear water. So I like to keep two spinner baits. Uh, occasionally I'll throw in a third one if I'm feeling it, if I'm feeling frisky. But most of the time I just keep two spinner baits in that front pouch. And that right there, easy peasy, lemon, smoke, bacon smoke cheesy right there is uh, my tackle bag. So now that we've done the tackle bag, let's hop on to the tackle box. Now when it comes to the tackle box, you can see that I keep this pretty simple as well. I'm not really packing this thing full to the brim, and the reasoning for that is because you're never gonna go through this many lures when you're fishing a pond for one day. Now, if you're going on a trip somewhere and you gotta take more with you, of course you're gonna shove more lures in your box. But for I have every single pond scenario that I could encounter around the entire country in this one box that's not even halfway full. And so I'm gonna open up this box lure by lure and show y'all exactly what I have in there and why I have it in here. So of course, I'm gonna start with top water. I've got a, uh, a mixture of frogs. I've got the, uh, the Hack Attack pad perch in two different colors, a clear and a more dark kind of crappie color. And then I've got popping frogs as well. This is the striking popping perch. And I've got it in a white and a brown. I just keep it simple. I keep four frogs with me, two for walking, two for popping, and one of each color pattern, a dark and a white. Super simple. Uh, when it comes to hard baits for pop for top waters, I have one singular popper right here. I just love the KVD HC popper. And then, where'd it go? Did I take it out? Okay, I took it out. I usually have one KVD Sexy Dog Junior as well, which is a top water walking bait. Uh, and the last top water I have, it's kind of top water, kind of a crank bait, is going to be the 2.5 wake. This here is a wake bait. It, uh, it basically kind of just wakes as a crankbait on the top of the water, on the surface. It creates a huge wake in the water, and especially on calm summer days when there's absolute glass out there. Reeling a, a wake bait like this one here can prove to be some deadly topwater action. So that's all that I have for topwater. No need to carry uh, a gajillion of them. That's all you need. Uh, for crankbaits, this is where I start to carry a little bit more. So I've got a few, as you'll see, always issues getting them unstuck. I've got a few lipless crankbaits. This is all the uh, the Strike King Red Eye Shad, and I've got them in different colors. This here is a is a pearl. I don't exactly know what what color this is, but it's a it's a it's a pearl. Um, I think it's olive is the color, an olive type color. And then I've got a crappie with an orange belly pattern, and then I usually keep one sexy shad as well. And then I also keep a few of the smaller size. Now these are the half ounce. One of these is a one knocker, and one of them is just a normal rattle. As you can tell the size between the half ounce and the quarter ounce. I find that the quarter ounce, especially in Texas ponds like this that are shallow and grassy, the quarter ounce is gonna be a lot easier to fish uh, because it doesn't sink as fast and you can still reel it slow while keeping it above that grass and not getting hooked. So that's the, the crankbaits that I bring in terms of lipless. And then I also bring three or four square bills as well because I told you guys a square bill crankbait is one of my favorite pond lures. So I bring it in basically two colors. I bring it in chartreuse black back, which is my favorite dirty water color. And then I also bring it in sexy shad or uh, sh uh, sexy shad chrome, I guess you would call it. And then I also bring two jerk baits. These are the two, uh, the KVD, I think just the HC, I forgot the exact name, but they are, they're very simple jerk baits. They got two hooks, they dive to about one and a half foot. And that's more for my clear water, uh, cold front, cold water situations that I keep two jerk baits in there. Uh, when it comes to swim baits, I bring two swim baits. I bring a glide bait like the S waiver, and then I bring a pre rigged swim bait like the Mag Draft. Those are the two swim baits that I bring, of course, along with the uh, the Rage swimmers that are in here that I put oftentimes, more often than these two, I throw that one on the flashy swimmer hook to get those bass to react. And then uh, the last thing is jigs. Jigs are super simple. I bring two or three swim jigs. I have a white swim jig and I have a, a bluegill swim jig. Usually in the post spawn, I'll bring two white swim jigs and one bluegill. And the rest of the year, I'll bring two bluegill and one white just because I know the bass are mostly feeding on bluegills for most of the year besides that little shad spawn deal. Then I always, always have two, three, or four chatterbaits. So I've got the Thunder Cricket in a green pumpkin and red. I've got the Thunder Cricket in a straight white. And I've got the Thunder Cricket in a black and blue. Uh, and of course, I can use the Rage Craw that I had in there as a, the black and blue Rage Craw as a trailer for all of these. And just in case I run into a situation where uh, I've got I've to flip around some grass, I've got to throw this around uh, a rocky area in a pond, I'm going to bring two jigs. The Outcast Tackle Juice Jig in peanut butter and jelly, 
and the Outcast Tackle Cage Fighter Jig in black and blue. And that is it. That is how simple my tackle is. Now, of course, this is for the ponds that I'm fishing mostly nowadays, which are a little bit of rock, but mostly grass and mud that I have here in Texas. You could be fishing a rock quarry. You could be fishing uh, uh, a pond in Florida that's a, a bowl that has nothing but hydrilla in it. Of course, you're gonna have different scenarios. This is just what I think are the pond essentials. A few crankbaits, a few jerk baits, a few swim baits, a few jigs, some top waters, and some soft plastics. Keep it nice and simple. Either carry it like this or put it in a backpack, and uh, y'all are ready to catch some fish. So that is the video, everybody. Of course, I hope that you learned something, that you enjoyed this content. I'm gonna be doing quite a bit more pond videos. As, like I said, as I travel around this summer, I'm gonna have some cool opportunities to make some dope pond stuff for you guys. So if you guys have any pond uh, tip suggestions that you wanna hear, drop them in the comment section below. I'll make sure to uh, make some videos about those. If you all haven't noticed, I really take the comment section seriously. I answer almost all, if not all of my comments, so I love to engage in conversation with y'all, and I love to make videos that help you guys out specifically. So, thanks for watching. I'm gonna have one fish catch here at the end of the video to give you guys a little fish catch in action, but uh, we'll see y'all next time on TRF. There's one. Yes, sir. I think it's big, I can't, I can't quite tell. Ah, not bad. Ah, second cast with the uh, flashy swimmer. One of my favorite little morning pond lures. Not my all time favorite. I will talk about my all time favorite in a, uh, a separate video, but this one takes the cake for my favorite morning lure when the fish are active, chasing bluegill around. Bring it in here, yes sir. Let's go, let's go, let's go. On the flashy swimmer. It's nuts how this cold front this morning has these fish literally feeling hot because the water's so warm, but yet the air is so cold, so these fish feel hot, but uh, that's a good one. I'll take it.